insights at the conference really uh, were more or less 200 um, um, no, pe people participants from yeah. those 120 were speakers from from different countries most of them from from russia but the the thing is that since we're in in pandemic the i mean it, it was hybrid it was a hybrid um uh format so that's why uh now in the audience there are not many people but with the hope that uh in youtube they're looking at you can i start can we start Today we had a great discussion about um, uh, not only soft skills but universal skills. I don't know. All right. Yeah, yeah. And skills for sustainability. And that was super interesting, really, really. Good. Because there were, we had uh, someone from uh, a company, a big company here in Russia. It's called Sistema. And then we had um, three universities and um, um, a person from the government of St. Petersburg. He was... I mean, when you see that the person understands how it's happening, he was like in between, and universities were like, um, the, re the reaction was like, we don't understand what you're talking about. And yeah. the person from the company was uh, also like, hey, this is pretty incredible that you don't understand, so. Good. Can I ask you two things, Magdalena, before we start? Yes. Um, what about language and any translation? We just assume people can understand my English. They, they, they are... Do, do you see the... Do you see the, the, the world in, in Zoom, in the Zoom? No. 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 Ah, interpretation. Yeah. Yeah, should be should be there. Just okay. don't click it. Keep okay. it in English. Otherwise, you're gonna start hearing yourself in Russian. In Russian. And that's gonna okay. be super interesting. And then the only other thing I wanted to ask you, and I should have asked before, is I don't know when I talk about Stellify, if people will know where that word comes from or or in russian what the, what might be the best word there you just so. you just say like the stars i mean in, in okay because okay. if you say stellify definitely no no okay. stella is just you know since it's latin but you can say in russian also svizda really. <laughs> So what was it in Russian? You tell me. Because I, I looked on Google Translate to see the nearest. So it's... Uh... Um, Zvizda. What about Zviosny? Zviosny. Tipo Zviosny Vojny. That's like Star Wars. No, Zviosny. Oh, right. <laughs> star? No, no, no wars, but star. Zviosny Vojny. No, what the correct? Stars. And but what about... Like, you can say Sviosni. Okay. Viadushni. Viadushni. No. No. Not that okay. one, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Better, better Sviosni. Okay, I'll leave it to the experts. Okay. Um, the only other challenge we may have... One sec, one sec. No. Alan, we can start. Okay. Um, yes, you can start. And, and the questions, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know about the questions. Um, they're going to tell me if, if online there are questions. And the people in the audience is also going to make questions. And okay. 
Now I'm going to present you, okay? Okay, yeah. Start. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here with us at the eighth conference uh, that we usually traditionally have in May here in St. Petersburg at Higher School of Economics. This year, the conference is called uh, Third Mission and Students. Um, I think that during all this de these days, we had um, very interesting and insightful um, ideas uh, from different um, speakers, from, from companies, from universities, Russian universities. We talk about alumni. We had uh, different roundtables about employability. And today with us um, is uh, a very good friend of Higher School of Economics. Uh, it's Alan Ferns. He's Associate Vice President of External Relations and Reputation at the Manchester University, England. So he's, today, he, we're going to have now a, a keynote speech. So he's, he's going to speak about social responsibility and reputation, the Manchester University journey. And why are we talking about that? And uh, I mean, the, this, this is, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not opening n nothing new, but a couple of weeks ago, Manchester, at the Times Higher Education Impact Rating Ranking, um, is number one. I mean, they are number one in third mission in sustainability. Okay, so um, our speaker is uh, one of the most recognized expert expert practitioners in the area of university reputation. He has worked. Uh, he has been working in that area for a lot of years at the, at the Manchester University, at the University of Manchester. And his responsibilities are providing co coordination, building activities, leadership. But most of all, I would say that uh, he's a strategic in reputation. And, and it's a person that really takes care of what happens around the university and most of all the core of the university people not only students but people um, as you might uh, know okay uh, when we talk about social responsibility last year last three years in uh, in the world we talk about this 17 uh, sustainable uh, uh, sustainable goals, okay? And uh, Manchester has a, mostly, in you know, all of them, very high uh, levels. So I'm not going to I'm not going to speak more because I want you to to hear uh, Alan. That's the most important thing here and the most interesting. And Alan, thank you very much that you're with us. It's a pleasure to see you again. And please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, Magdalena. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with everybody today. Uh, I'm only sorry that I'm joining you from my kitchen in my house and that I'm not with you there in Russia. Uh, but hopefully next year or very soon may be able to meet in person. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Magdalena. What I wanted to do today is just tell a little bit of the story of the University of Manchester and talk about three things that have been important for the university over the past 20 years or so. One of those is the, the importance of strategy to the university and having clear goals and strategy. One of them is the importance of managing the university's reputation and how the university is seen 
around the world. And the third one is the importance to both of those of social responsibility and paying attention to sustainability and our impact on the world. So I wanted to tell our story and how those three things have been very important in the success of the university. So now I'm going to share my screen. Uh, and hopefully uh, you can now see that. So what I would like to do is tell you a little bit about the University of Manchester, a little bit about how we've used strategic planning, how we look after our reputation, and then what we've been able to do around the whole sphere of social responsibility and impact, and particularly how we've sought to involve and engage students and staff in the social responsibility agenda. So just a little bit, first of all, about the University of Manchester. We're a big university located in the north of England. We have a big income around one billion UK pounds. So around one and a half billion dollars, a hundred billion rubles. We have 40,000 full-time students, of which around 11,000 are international students from outside of the UK. We are the most popular university in England, so we receive more applications to study at our university than any other university. We teach almost every subject in medicine, the sciences and the arts. And we're rated fifth in the UK behind Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial College, LSE, University College London. We're rated fifth in the UK for our research quality and power. We have around 400,000 alumni, graduates, all around the world, and around 12,000 staff work on our campus, around 22% of our staff. The university has deep roots and a long history. It has its origins in two separate universities, that were both founded in Manchester around 200 years ago. The Technical University, which was known as UMIST, and an institution called Owens College that became the Victoria University of Manchester. In 2004, these two universities came together in a merger to create one big university. We then became in 2004, the biggest university in the United Kingdom. And we were granted a new Royal Charter by the Queen, as you see in this photograph. Now it's important to say that the decision to merge the two universities wasn't required by a crisis or a problem. It was because the governors and the leaders of the two universities saw an opportunity. Their view was that only by combining the strength of the two universities could we create a powerful university in the north of England that could challenge the dominance of the universities in London and Oxford and Cambridge. So this is a quote from the first leader of the new merged university, Professor Alan Gilbert. And he says that the merger created an opportunity that was driven by ambition. A 
And ambition has been one of the key drivers of the University of Manchester for the past 17 years. One key feature of the university since its foundation in 2004 is it's always been guided by a very clear strategic plan. And the first strategic plan was published in 2004 and new versions, refreshed versions of that plan were published in 2010 and 2020. But the strategic plan guides all of the activities and priorities of the university. It has at its core three very clear goals and one very clear ambition. Those three clear goals are to conduct world-class leading research, to provide outstanding learning and experience for our students, and then uniquely to pay attention to our social responsibility to make sure we're giving something back to our community in our city and to society across the world. And I will come back later to describe in more detail what we mean by this social responsibility agenda. But at the time of our first plan in 2004, we were the only university in the UK and I think the only university in Europe who had social responsibility as a key priority alongside research and teaching. The other feature of our strategic plan was the ambition for the university to be one of the top 25 universities in the world. At the time when we merged, there was only one league table of global universities. That was the academic ranking of world universities produced by Shanghai Tong University in China. And at the time of the merger in 2004, we were number 78 in that ranking of world universities. In the time since 2004, in the 17 years since, we've risen up the rankings to become number 36 in that league table. We've also risen in the other two rankings when they were introduced so that we're now number 27 in the world in the QS rankings and number 51 in the world in the Times Higher Education global rankings. So we've made very, very good progress, but not quite yet at our ambition of being one of the top 25 universities in the world. So I said earlier about the importance of the strategic plan to guiding the university. So what does our strategic plan look like? What does it cover? Like many other strategic plans for many other universities around the world, it covers some key themes. It talks about our campus and our facilities and buildings. It talks about our research and our publications and the status of our academic research. It talks about our staff and how important they are to the success of the university. It talks about our students and the experience that we expect students who come to our university to have. It also talks about how we pay for all this, where the money comes from, where we will spend our money. But unusually, for many university strategic plans, it also talked about the university's reputation and the need for the university to manage 
and to pay attention to its reputation. For us at the University of Manchester, we see our reputation as being one of our most important assets, as important as our campus, as our staff, as the research we conduct. So our reputation is something we have to carefully monitor and carefully manage. The reason we think that is because a good reputation is essential to being a world-class university. A good reputation will help a university to recruit and retain the best staff, to attract funding and partners for its research, to recruit the best students from around the world, and to be an important and influential voice when it's publicizing the work of its professors and researchers. Reputation is also very important in those lead tables that I was talking about before. Reputation provides a key component of the Times Higher Education lead table. 33% of that lead table is measured in reputation surveys. It also provides 50% of the scores in the QS world rankings. So for any university that wants to succeed in global rankings, it needs to be paying attention to its reputation and to improving its reputation. At the University of Manchester, we talk about reputation in our strategic plan. We talk about the importance of celebrating our success and distinctiveness and providing a script and tools so that our staff and students can become ambassadors for the university. We translate those objectives and those targets and goals for our reputation into a detailed communications and marketing plan for the university that is delivered by the professional colleagues who work in communications and student recruitment at the university. And here are some ways that they're important for us to deliver good communications. The importance of the university brand, the university logo, its identity. We pay very careful attention to making sure this is seen across our campus, across our website, across our publications. Every time people see the University of Manchester, they should see and recognize our brand and its importance. It's also an important way of guiding our communications. All the communications that come out of the university and the priorities that we attach to those. We have some guiding principles for our communications. Most of our communications now are digital. So we always look at digital first for our communications, paying particular attention to our website and social media channels. We pay as much attention to the photographs and images we use in our communications as we do to the words. We also know that it's important that we, sell, we tell positive, strong stories about the difference the university is making to the world. And that we target our key audiences, whether that's prospective students, other universities, research partners, politicians and government in the UK. 
we have a strong targeting for all our communications. But one of the key things that we've struggled with is if we are going to put all this attention and all this resource into managing our reputation, how do we measure our reputation? How do we know what people think about the University of Manchester and how people think about the University of Manchester compared to other universities in Great Britain or other universities around the world. So we've struggled for some years to find ways of measuring our reputation. We now think we've found some good ways of doing that. Together with 10 other universities in the United Kingdom, we've come up with a tracker, a survey that measures what people think of universities amongst these key audiences. So by joining together with other universities, every year we go out and we ask alumni, students, staff, people who want to study at university, the public across the UK, teachers in schools, international agents around the world, parents of young people wanting to come to university, opinion formers, so political leaders, leaders of cities, mayors, and policy makers, and business and industry. Between the 10 universities, we go out every year and ask them questions about universities in the UK, what they think of different universities, and which universities they think are the best in different fields. We've now been doing this for four or five years, and it provides us with a wealth of information about how we're performing as a university. We get lots of dashboards and charts from this information. Here is one of them, where we ask these different audiences what they think of the University of Manchester. So the, you can see the question here is, if the best university in the UK scored 10 out of 10, what score would you give the University of Manchester? And you can see that students give us a good score, alumni give us a good score, people wanting to study at university and political leaders give us a good score, all the way down to staff who still give us a good score but not quite as good as the students. Now we get this data on a regular basis so we can see the trends, the improvements, the declines, where we need to pay attention to the reputation and how different people are seeing us. Because there are 10 universities taking part in these surveys, we can also see how we perform relative to other universities in the United Kingdom. So I'm not allowed for confidential reasons to give you the scores for the other universities, but I can tell you the University of Manchester is this purple bar here. So when we ask people who want to study at the university in the UK, how they rate different universities, you can see that the University of Manchester does well. It comes second in this group in the UK. But there's one university, this university does better than us. So we receive all this data on a regular basis and that becomes very important to us in managing our reputation and over time tells us where our strengths are, where we need to improve our communications and it's particularly important in guiding our recruitment activities for recruiting students in the UK and around the world. But if you're going to carve out a reputation, 
what you also have to look out for is what makes you different. What makes your university stand out from the crowd? You have to find something that makes you distinctive, that makes you different from your competitors. And one of the things that we've sought to do with the University of Manchester since our merger in 2004 is use social responsibility as one of our core goals and one of the things that makes the University of Manchester different or distinctive from most of the universities in the UK. So what we've tried to do is in all our activities, make sure that social responsibility is a key feature or at the forefront of everything we do. So in our research, we try to make sure that almost all the research we do has a direct impact on the health and the well-being of our community and our society. We also try to make sure that our graduates are aware of their social responsibility as citizens, so that they're giving something back to society, both while they're studying with us and when they graduate and go out into the world of work. We also try to make sure that in all its activities, the University of Manchester engages with our community, with the community in Manchester where we're based, but also in the world community. We also try to make sure that in the operations and the running of the university, we're socially responsible so that we're paying attention to the needs of our own community when we employ staff, when we buy services and the way that we behave as a big employer and a big citizen in the city of Manchester. We also try to make sure that as an organisation, we're environmentally responsible with ambitious net zero targets for our environmental sustainability. And in order to guide all these activities, just like our communications, we have a series of five year plans that determine our social responsibility activities across research, across teaching, across the way that we run our university. And I just want to give you some examples of how we do that. In the research area, we try to make sure that most of our research is focused on projects that contribute to some of the key socially responsible goals, that they're about creating a healthy population across the world, that they're about creating a more equal world and they're about environmental sustainability. So in determining which research the university will devote its energy and resources to, but also which research it will talk about publicly, we try to pick socially responsible research projects. And to illustrate that, I want to try to show you a brief video around that. So we just have to pay attention and hope that the technology might work here. If it doesn't, I apologize and we'll go back to my presentation. But I will try to share with you a brief video demonstrating the university's socially responsible uh, research. Across the world, we face challenges that impact upon all of our lives. We demand so much of our planet, of ourselves and of each other. 
At the University Are you of Manchester, seeing that? we're meeting these challenges head Alan, on. Alan, maybe you, what you have to do is uh, to, to, give the, to give uh, YouTube Our the, 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 um, the possibility. So, okay. Maybe, so maybe, maybe it's, it, I mean, you have to go out and then just click another uh, demonstration. Yes. Okay, let me let me just try again. Yes. Yes. Are you now we're this? seeing it. Yes, 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 yes. Across the world, we face our lives. We demand so much of our planet, of ourselves, and of each other. At the University of Manchester, we're meeting these challenges head on. We're committing our knowledge and power to tackling some of the world's critical questions. Our research is leading to more efficient, sustainable and affordable energy for the planet. It's finding sustainable alternatives to the finite resources used to manufacture goods we use every day. We're developing advanced materials for the most extreme environments and the most familiar. Our expertise is helping to tackle inequalities that people face across the globe. It's also helping to create a world in which more of us survive cancer and live longer. As long as the world keeps turning, we'll continue to face challenges and our demands will keep growing by the day. But as the UK's biggest campus-based university, Manchester has the size and strength to see the new ways forward, bringing the best minds together from across disciplines and sectors. We find fresh and innovative answers to the world's biggest questions. These are global challenges. These are Manchester solutions. Okay, I think we're back, yes? Good. <laughs> so there you can see that very much a focus on our research priorities and on the communication of our research, we're looking at these social responsible goals. We're looking at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and we're trying to focus our research and also talk about research that is relevant to those goals. The same applies in terms of our teaching and learning with our students. Well, what we also are trying to do is focus the student experience on their social responsibility. So here we have a special programme that all of our students participate in, which is called Stellify. This is something like uh, to make a star. So it's uh, Zviozny, 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 the translators will tell us. Um, but this is a program that is available for all of our students. It's a series of activities across the university that students will take part in beyond their own program. So whether you're a student in science or medicine or arts, you will take part in other activities in other areas. So to, so to learn about important topics like the green agenda, the net zero agenda, social justice, world poverty, global health. So the opportunity to learn outside your area of specialism so that you can understand the issues that matter in the world. We also offer students on this program the, the opportunity to volunteer 
on projects that make a difference to communities, either here in Manchester or elsewhere around the world. So volunteering opportunities. And we encourage students to develop their own leadership skills in all these areas and to look to the future at when they graduate and go into the world of work and into wider society to look at how they can make a difference as well as to how they can earn money for themselves or their families. So we try to make sure that when students leave the University of Manchester, they don't just leave with a University of Manchester degree, but they leave with some idea of their responsibilities of citizens of the world. So in both of those areas, in research, but also in teaching and learning, we try to make sure there's a core built around social responsibility. We also try to do that in the way that we run the University of Manchester. So in the way we build our buildings, employ our staff, buy our goods, etc. And in all those three ways, we try to make sure that social responsibility is a distinctive feature of the University of Manchester. One of the problems we have, however, a little bit like reputation, as I descri described earlier, is how do you measure your social responsibility and impact? That has been a problem for a long time. But over the past four or five years, ways of measuring your impact have begun to emerge. And key to these are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which provide a world template to measure your social impact of your activities and there are a series of measures that are relevant, not just to universities, but to governments, to countries, to international organizations. They provide a way of measuring the impact that you're having on the world and its development. And you will know that over the past three or four years, the Times Higher Education, the THE, has taken those UN Sustainable Development Goals and produced a ranking for universities that seeks to measure the impact of universities against those goals. So that ranking was launched in 2019 and it measures all universities who enter the, the ranking against these 17 United Nations goals that focus on poverty, hunger, health, education, equalities between men and women, clean water, decent work, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities, climate action, and peace and social justice. And this ranking uses a series of metrics to rank, uni rank universities according to how their research measures against these uh, 17 goals, how they're teaching and learning, how their engagement with the public and how the way they run their university measures against these goals. Each university chooses to enter, if it wishes, uh, this lead table in the first league table in 2019, there were 450 universities entered. Last year, there were 760 universities entered. And this year, there were 1,240 universities entered. And interestingly, the country in the world that has most universities that enter this ranking is the Russian Federation. So 75 universities from the Russian Federation enter this ranking and some of your universities do very well in this ranking. The University of Manchester 
has entered the ranking since the beginning in 2019. And in 2019, we came third in that ranking. In 2020, we came eighth in the ranking. And then I'm pleased to say when it was announced last month, we came first in the ranking earlier this year. So this is a big achievement for the university, but also something that we think has been testament to the focus and the priority we pay, we've placed on social responsibility and impact in all of our activities for 17 years now since the University of Manchester was first founded in 2017. I'll now try and show you just a short video where you will see our President and Vice Chancellor, Professor Dame Nancy Rothwell, and one of my colleagues talk about the importance of this agenda and this league table to our university. Uh, once again, Please bear with me while I transition uh, the screen here. At the University of Manchester, we believe that universities exist for public benefit. And to support this, we've placed social responsibility as one of our core goals for the past decade. Universities are here to address the big questions and challenges facing our world. And there's no better framework for this than the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which apply to all countries and all sectors of society. We've taken part in the university impact rankings since their inception, because we value the feedback they provide about our performance on each of the global goals. They also cover every aspect of a university's impact, our research, our teaching and learning, our engagement with the public, and how we operate as sizable organisations in our cities and regions. So we're absolutely delighted to top the world in the Times Higher Education University Impact Rankings in 2021. But more importantly, we're pleased to be part of a growing community of universities committed to measuring and sharing their social impact. We're now going to highlight 17 examples of what we've achieved across the Sustainable Development Goals. We've invested more than £15 million each year in financial support for students from disadvantaged backgrounds. Our students established Britain's first campus-based food bank right here on campus to address food poverty in local communities. More than 3,000 of our students graduate in healthcare programmes each year our Manchester Access Programme has supported more than 2,000 local students from families with no experience of higher education into our university. We've achieved 15 charter marks for gender equality. We lead the biggest ever research project in the sustainable development of the world's dams. We are divesting from fossil fuel and other carbon intensive investments. We've become an accredited living wage employer. We formed Health Innovation Manchester to help transform the health and well-being of Greater Manchester's 2.8 million citizens. We are one of the few universities in the UK to hold a charter mark for race equality. We receive more than a million public visitors to our four cultural institutions each year. The Manchester Museum, the Whitworth, John Ryland's Library and Jodrell Bank Discovery Centre. We are the first university in the UK to use the social value portal for measuring impact through our supply chain. We committed to becoming a zero carbon university by 2038. We've already eliminated more than 250,000 pieces of avoidable single-use plastics with more to come. We've opened Brundage Park to enhance biodiversity, support health and well-being, and improve resilience to climate change. We partner with the WHO, Médecins Sans Frontières, and the Red Cross in our humanitarian and conflict response work. We also hold the government register for volunteer health professionals who can be deployed overseas in emergencies. We signed the global SDG Accords to embed sustainable development in all that we do. These are just a few examples of what we do. We want to stimulate new ideas, actions and collaborations so that together we can play our full role in tackling the world's sustainable development goals.
And with that, I'll conclude and invite any questions or discussion that people wish to have. Alan, thank you very much for, for telling us the story of the University of uh, Manchester. Since the beginning, as a university that really takes care of social responsibility. Um, one of the things that maybe um, uh, in, in Russia, uh, we have to maybe uh, take in account about your university is, uh, is that the strategy, strategy of the university includes two great things that we're talking, I mean, already three years about. And it's reputation and, and social responsibility. I mean, I remember when I, when I see the, the way you, you built the strategy, um, the words in white, they say um, people, first people, and the three missions of the university. But could you please, I mean, this is a question I'm going to make <laughs> first, but could you explain in, in which, I mean, how you do that to, to have reputation? Um, how did you do this? I mean, to have reputation in the strategy of the university. Um, how, how was it that the, um, the leaders of the university understood that reputation should be next to all the other um, five um, assets, I would say, that, that are tangibles, and reputation is an intangible. So could, could you explain that? I think that's interesting and should give us some insights. Yeah, I think, um, I think there are perhaps two or three reasons that it, it happened at Manchester. I think the first thing was, although we're quite an old university in terms of our roots, um, we had the opportunity for a new beginning in 2004 when we came together in this merger. And as part of that, we took a look at successful universities all around the world and said, what makes a successful university? And we knew that it was some things like uh, a nice campus, good facilities for science. We knew that it was having professors who had very good reputations, perhaps some who had Nobel prizes or had distinguished records in their own area. We knew that it was having good facilities and recreational and social facilities for our students and good welfare facilities. But we were also conscious that there was another thing that was present in all the best universities in the world, that they had good reputations. And we said, well, what, how, how do they do that and how, what does a good reputation look like and how do you build a good reputation? So we knew it was a key ingredient, but we then had to deconstruct it and say, well, how do you build a good reputation? It's about what you do, it's about where you come from, and it's about how you tell your story. So we started to pay attention to that. So that was the first ingredient. We had that new beginning that I think in other universities I've worked at, in other universities I've, I've, I've spoken to, sometimes people just don't stop and think about the importance of reputation. It's just something that you have and happens. It's not something that can be managed. I think the second thing that was important was we've had a series of leaders and particularly presidents and vice chancellors who have un understood the importance of reputation. And sometimes it's very important, I think, for those of us who work in this field 
to spend time with our leaders, with our presidents, actually talking to them about the importance of reputation and that they should pay some attention and use some of their time thinking about building the university's reputation. But we have been very fortunate uh, in that at Manchester in that all, all of our vice chancellors have spent time paying attention to reputation, devoting some of their time and some of the university's resources to investing in our reputation. I think the third thing, and this is only more recent, is you need to be able to measure and demonstrate the importance of your reputation. And that's why I spent some time talking about measurement and the tracker. Because if you can't count something, well then many people think it doesn't count. So I think if you can measure it and demonstrate to your academic colleagues that this is a university's reputation and it's important to our fortunes, it's important to recruiting students, it's important to attracting funding, it's important to how we're seen by government and business, I think then people will start paying attention to what our reputation is. I think it's also important that you regularly go out to the world outside the university and ask them what they think of the university, where the university is doing well, where it's doing badly, so that you're not just having a conversation inside the confines of the university. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan, for the for that answer. Um, is there any questions in the audience? Yes. Okay. Just maybe you can maybe you can approach. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for a really interesting presentation. I already asked Magdalena to ask you to send it to us to look for all of the graphics more clearly. And uh, I really want to ask you about the participation of the students in those uh, strategy of the social responsibilities and sustainable development. How uh, can you give some kind of examples how the students participate in these things? What they do maybe like have some kind of collapse or something like this? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, so the first thing to say is that for students to take part in this, it is voluntary. So it, 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 they're not obliged to do this, but it is something that's available for all of our students alongside their ordinary program. So if you're studying physics or if you're studying sociology, or if you're studying the Russian language, you can do that program, but you can also choose to take part in this separate program, which we call Stellify. And if you choose to take part throughout your three or four years at the university, there will be a series of opportunities that you can gain credits for. So I'll give you some examples. So one example of this is at the beginning of the academic year, we do a program that's open to all our students. So before classes begin in September, at the beginning of every year, they can spend two days with new students from all different programs, taking part in a big exercise, a big challenge that looks at the whole issue of global warming and net zero. So as well as being an academic exercise, it's part of a good introduction and induction for the students to meet people from outside their programme. So they will work in small teams from, with people from across the university on a challenge relating to net zero and environmental sustainability. And that's right at the start of your program. And I think in the last program, we had around 
6,000 of our 8,000 new students decided to take part in that program. In normal years, that's been done as a practical face-to-face -face program. Last year and this year, unfortunately, because of COVID, that will be a virtual program. So that's one example. Another example is throughout the year, students can take small programs around, based around the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So they may do a program about world poverty, or they may do a program about social justice, or about peacemaking around the world. These are small programs with not too much content that any of our students can opt into doing and require them to do some work and participate in some discussions and classes. The third thing that students have to do is they have to do some opportunity to volunteer in the community. So they may volunteer at a local hospital with a local activity for sports, for young people. They may volunteer in the summer vacation in a project on the other side of the world. But there's a whole host of volunteering opportunities collated by the university. And if you participate in that, you also get some credits. If throughout your three or four years at Manchester University, you do a certain number of those opportunities, well, then you also qualify for what we call the Stellify Award. And so that when you graduate, as well as getting your degree in physics or whatever, you also get an additional certificate saying that you've qualified because you've taken part in this program. So it's not compulsory. And at the moment around a half of our students will decide to take part. Although many students will take part in just one small part of that program. Thank you very much, Alan, for your answer. I think, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Alan, there, there's a question I think, I mean, we have to make you, because um, you would say that during uh, 2020 and the pandemic, and we're now like a, ye a year and, and two or three uh, months of, of pandemic, um, you might say that universities have had a rough time, mostly at the beginning, you know, when it, it was just chaos and it was difficult to understand what to do. So there, there were, I mean, in the world there are many universities and everybody did what they could do. But when you have a, a crisis um, um, group and, and you prepare for that, um, maybe your reputation is, is less impact. So if you could just, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it's a long story and a very interesting one. Uh, but if you could tell us just ha some hints of what happened, how did you leave the, the, the pandemic at the university? What were the problems you, you, you had to face? And, and how, how did that impact your reputation as a plus or a minus? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Um, and I think um, the experience of all British universities with the pandemic has been some good, some bad, but I think presents some opportunities in this area around reputation and social responsibility. So I would say, um, like many other universities and organizations around the world, the pandemic caused a big disruption uh, to, to the running of the university. So within the space of a few days in March last year, March 2020, we closed down the whole of the university campus. So we, uh, we stopped teaching on the campus. We stopped most research. 
most of the laboratories, the buildings were closed. And during that time, we had to transfer most of our teaching online onto Zoom, onto different platforms. And I think the remarkable thing, the remarkable achievement was how incredibly well people did that. Uh, particularly our professors and lecturers managed to have uh, courses, lectures, classes running within three or four days of us closing it, it, it down. Um, and for many of our programmes, that's been the main way that programmes have been taught for the past year, has been online and through this experience. That, I think, was a, a tribute and a good thing to the university, how quickly our staff and our students were able to adapt to that new medium. I think there have also been big challenges that have hit the reputation of the university and universities around the world. I think um, one thing that students were not so happy with, with that experience, that wasn't what they signed up for, that wasn't what they were paying quite expensive fees for. And so students began to ask, what is this value for money for me? Why am I paying £7,000, £10,000? I thought I was going to get a rich experience living in Manchester, visiting the campus, and I'm just here in my bedroom watching a computer screen. So there was a big challenge to universities about whether we were providing the necessary experience. We have particular challenges in the UK and at Manchester because in September we invited students to come onto the campus and maybe for one week or two weeks they were going to classes but then we sent them back to their dormitories and their bedrooms and said this is where you will study from, you mustn't mix with other students, you mustn't come onto the campus. Uh, you must learn online in your bedroom at the university. And so all of the other things that people come to universities for, to meet friends, to socialise, to hang out, to play sports, to join clubs, to take part in activities, they were all taken away by the government restrictions. So we had thousands and thousands of students who were bored and unhappy in every student city in the UK. And that became a challenge um, for, for all universities, for, for our reputation. So there has been some big problems there, I think particularly among students and also our staff. They were having to work from home. How do you keep staff motivated and create a sense of community when people are working from home with all the other things they have to balance and take care of at home. Having said that, I think there are some opportunities to universities arising out of this and going forward. I don't know about in Russia or elsewhere around the world, but I think uh, the pandemic has brought to the forefront the importance of research and universities. Without universities, we wouldn't have any of the vaccines. We wouldn't have the AstraZeneca vaccine that was pioneered in the UK. We wouldn't have the Sputnik vaccine that was pioneered in Russia. This was invented in universities by university scientists and researchers. Um, I think also, I don't know about in Russia, but in the UK, you've not been able to open a newspaper or turn on the television without seeing a professor from a university talking about the challenges of the, of the pandemic and the problems and the solutions for society to negotiate this 
and find a way out of the pandemic. So I think it's reminded people of the importance of universities and the importance of knowledge and science. And I think that's a good platform upon which to demonstrate our relevance, our impact and our social responsibility. I should say at the University of Manchester, what we've sought to do is all those programmes about our research, the Stellify programme for students, we've tried to make a big component of those about the pandemic. So we've tried to find research stories that relate to the COVID pandemic. We've tried to find volunteering opportunities for our students in the vaccination centres or in other opportunities around the COVID pandemic. So it's been a tough year, but some lessons to learn as we find a way forward. Alan, thank you very much. Um, are there, yes, we have another question. Can you come to us? Yes. Hello. <laughs> Can you Hello. See me? <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for that uh, great um, story about uh, the strategies of reputation construction and increase. I wanted to ask the question um, about those universities uh, whose prog uh, which programs are validated by the University of Manchester. For instance, in Moscow, there is the Moscow Higher School of uh, Social and Economic Sciences, which we usually simply call Shaninka, yeah, and yeah. which programs are validated by the Manchester University. So are those strategies of um, reputation increase, uh, the notion of importance of reputation spread all over those universities validated by the Uni of Manchester? or it's just the beat, um, it's just the main uni, the uni of uh, Manchester itself, who understands the importance of um, reputation. Thank you. That's a, a good question. Thank you. And it's, uh, it's very nice to hear uh, somebody reference uh, Shaninka uh, and uh, uh, an institution that's very close to my heart. Magdalena knows I've been at the university too many years, but uh, Professor Shanim was a, co a colleague of mine and uh, I was working at the university when we had the first cohort of sociology students visited from the Soviet Union during the time of Glasnost and as Professor Shanim uh, set up the school in, in Russia and the university was very pleased to validate its programme. So nice to hear about that and to know it's still going strong. I think uh, all of those partners and associations, um, whether they're degrees that we validate or whether they're partnerships around research that we have with the university, we hope by those partnerships, we enhance our reputation, but we also transfer some of our reputation to the students and the staff working in those organizations. So an important part of our reputation strategy is who our friends, partners, and associates are with. And when we choose to validate a program or to partner with another university, we say, would a partnership with this university help our reputation, enhance our reputation, and would a partnership with, this uni with our university enhance their reputation? So one needs to be very careful about, about who one chooses for those uh, partnerships. And reputation is an important part of that. And I, I hope that for students who study at a, an institute like Shaninka, it's not only the, the experience that they get there that's important, 
but the fact that they will emerge with a degree validated by the University of Manchester is also a good reason for choosing that, that organisation. I should say we're doing some work at the moment about a high profile partnership, a three way partnership that we might uh, have across the world between the University of Manchester, the University of Melbourne and the University of Toronto. And we're forging close links for partnerships and exchange of research and student between these three universities because we're very, very similar universities in terms of our size, our location in those countries and the kind of history and activities that we're involved in. So we're trying to see if we can have an international partnership between those three universities. And if that's a success, we may evolve other partners to join that partnership over time. Alan, you know where to, you know where yeah. to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Alan, um, I, th I think now uh, we're going to conclude our keynote speech. I mean, this was a great conversation, I think. Uh, we are very happy and grateful that you were here with us. Well, here, but this is the here that we could uh, have you uh, at, at the conference. Uh, it's a unique story. It's a, it, it, it's a, it's a great university. Uh, I mean, since we've met uh, in Utrecht, a couple of years ago, and when you've been here in, in, in St. Petersburg, I mean, it's just have been great to, to have you at our um, conference uh, all of these years. So thank you very much. Uh, with this, I'm finishing our, um, uh, our, our keynote, our, our, our activity now, uh, but just don't go away, okay? We're going to finish now. Just wait one second, okay? Thank you very much, okay. Alan. Thank you for those that no, were listening to us and too. I, hopefully, maybe I can see you in in uh, in in Russia next time. But a Definitely. To be here. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.